Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to our late afternoon update. I'm Victoria Holmes here in the digital studio. Governor Roy Cooper held a COVID task force briefing this afternoon. He was joined by State Superintendent Kathy Truitt, urging K through 12 grade schools to open for in-person instruction. Officials say students are falling behind in schools due to remote instruction. Also, issues like internet access and isolation are negatively impacting students' learning. Many students also face food insecurity and rely on schools to provide them with meals. Remote learning limits their access to those meals. Governor Cooper, Superintendent Truant, Chair Davis, and Secretary Cohen sent a letter to local school board members and superintendents encouraging in-person instruction across the state. You can read the letter on our website. And here's a quick look at COVID numbers across the state. North Carolina health officials reported a drop in hospitalizations again as the number of new daily cases dipped below 3,000 on Tuesday. Hospitalizations dropped by 45 on Tuesday to 2,741, the lowest since mid-December. The state reports about 2,900 new cases. At least 9,409 9, deaths are being blamed on the virus, an increase of 67 deaths from Monday. Two FBI agents were killed while serving a war warrant in Florida early Tuesday morning. It happened at an apartment complex in the Sunrise neighborhood of Fort Lauderdale. Officials say they were serving a search warrant related to a case involving child pornography and violent crimes against children. That's when the suspect opened fire at the agents, killing two and injuring three. A SWAT team then stormed the building. The suspect was killed in the incident. The Biden administration will begin shipping COVID-19 vaccines to U.S. pharmacies next week. Coronavirus coordinator Jeff Zinn said some 6,500 pharmacies around the country will receive a total of 1 million doses of the vaccine. The number of participating pharmacies is expected to grow as drug makers increase production, allowing more doses to be allocated. The 1 million doses being shipped to pharmacies will be on top of the 10.5 million doses being allocated to states next week. We're counting down to Super Bowl Sunday, and while we're waiting for game day, WNCT is bringing you stories behind the championship. Today, we get to know the first female referee in the NFL. The opportunity and responsibility of being first is to ensure you're not the last. Welter was the first woman to coach in the NFL. Because when you're the one of one, you're the only, the only sample that they have, and the narrative isn't your own. It's not, can Jen Welter coach um, in the National Football League? The question was, can a woman? The fact Tampa has two women on its coaching staff is a testament to the job she did. And seeing Thomas become the first woman to officiate in the Super Bowl, well, that makes her happy. It's the biggest platform on of sports, and she's earned her way there the right way. And I think it is going to give generations um, something they didn't even know that they were missing. Making history is nothing new for Thomas. She was the first woman to officiate in a major college football game, the first to officiate in a bowl game, the first to officiate in a Big Ten stadium. The secret to her success, she said in an interview in 2016, she loves what she does. My biggest thing, and I've learned this myself, is go out and do it because you love it. Don't do not do it to prove somebody wrong because I'm a female or and I need to make a statement, but just go out and do the job because it's something that you want to do and the respect will come. It's, don't go looking for it. WNCT Now will bring you special reports during Super Bowl week along with pregame pre-game and post-game coverage of the big game. We're looking forward to hosting Super Bowl 55 on Sunday right here on WNCT Channel 9. And be sure to tune into this episode of What the Politics. The Department of Homeland Security issued an advisory for domestic extremist activity. Today, we talked to a cybersecurity expert about the threat of extremist activity in the United States. You can hear that by clicking the Features tab on our website under WNCT Podcast Network. You can also tune in on Apple and Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Thank you for tuning in to our late afternoon update. I'm Victoria Holmes here in the digital studio.